Okay, so a quick revision of dynamic time warping, which you have already seen before. Uh, so you you know sounds or audio signals they are continuous time oh, sorry they are um, discrete in time and quantized in values but they are like time series where values are occurring successively in time and this time series uh, how do we analyze this hari hari hara so these three sounds are there hari hari and hara and the time series from looking at time series it is so difficult to see what exactly is what i mean uh, you can't make out so that's why we do different kinds of analysis you have seen feature extraction and uh, spectrograms you have seen now the thing about time series is that the patterns could be shifted in time you see these two sounds hari and hari just that this hari starts a bit late right and if you want to measure similarity between two time series then that similarity will be uh hampered if you shift one of the signals right if you are measuring so okay question for you how do you measure similarity of two time signals how similar are the two time series how do you measure the similarity by correlation if their correlation will be high then we can say that the pattern is yeah very good very good so one simple method could be just uh, subtract the two signals and their difference should be close to zero then you say the two signals are very similar but when the shifting thing comes when there is a shift then difference will be non zero even if the two audio are uh, same audio just shifted in time uh, slightly so what we do is we measure uh, moving difference for example you measure difference uh, of the two time series then you measure uh, shifted shift one time series in time, in time basically and that uh, variable shift uh, the shift is one variable and you measure the difference for different values of this shift and which for whichever value is the least difference you take that as the uh, difference in the two time series so for example for these two uh, time series the two audio signals if i shift this slightly towards right and then there will be one value of that shift for which the two signals will exactly match and their difference will be close to zero may not be exactly zero but very close to zero right so the, i will say that is the uh, time difference in the two audio or in the two signals similarly look at this example same example but a bit zoomed in that one or uh, one is shifted uh, version of the other so similarly they could be stretching in time not just shifting but also stretching like this sound hari hari right so you can they could be stretching in time how do you take care of stretching hari so they could be so um they could be simple examples like uh, this and as you said co correlation so you take cross correlation for different values of shift what is the correlation and uh, it takes care of noise also um and then yeah this is the main thing which i want to discuss that uh, when you have two time series like this 0 1 2 3 0 another one is 0 1 1 1 2 3 0 so when two time series are given to you you want to align them or you want to find the minimum distance between them then a very popular method is dynamic time warping where you exactly uh, you measure difference element wise like this element how close it is to all of these elements then this element this element how close it is to all the elements this element how close it is to all the other elements and then you get a matrix and if i plot this matrix in the 
uh, just color coding that the value of the color, the color tells us how close it is. For example, if it is black, this means close to zero. White means close to a large value. So white means a large value. Here it is three. Uh, so you, you want to find uh, the least distance. So what you will uh, do, you will find the best match, basically matching this to zero, this to one, this to maybe not to one, not to one, but to two, this to next three, this to zero. Like what is the best alignment between the two? That alignment is like a path uh, in this matrix which starts from this top left corner and ends at the bottom right corner. And this path is like this, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1. And um, what, what are the allowed jumps that you have uh, put as constraints that I don't want to skip some values or I do want to skip some values like that. So this, uh, this is all uh, given by you that what moves are allowed from here can you move left side or top side answer is no you cannot go left or top you can only move to the right to the bottom or to the diagonal uh, bottom right so that is these directions are given by you and then you ask the algorithm to find the uh, path with with the least distance and then it finds out for you this is dynamic time warping and the algorithm as i explained in the uh, lecture video. It is based on Bellman's optimality principle that you kind of find out uh, uh, what is the best uh, what is the best path reaching this node, or what is the best path reaching reading, reaching this node, and you just take the best path, ignore the non-best paths. This is the Bellman optimality principle, and okay, so this is all about dynamic time warping. Uh, I'm not going to details because I know you have already seen this videos. Now I would like to solve a problem with you, which is based on dynamic time warping. Uh, where is the problem? Yes, here it is. Let me share the other slide with you. Yes. So here is a problem. So take out your pen and pencil and paper and uh, try to solve this problem. You have already seen the videos before. I hope you all know dynamic time warping. Now the question is, a farmer is harvesting crops and she's allowed to make a single pass starting from any cell in the left edge and ending at any cell on the right edge. And you start from here, you have to go up till here. You can, and what directions are allowed, what moves are allowed, you can go either left to right or diagonally upwards or diagonally downwards, towards right. You cannot go back left or you cannot go uh, vertically down or vertically up. You have to move only in these three directions. Now, what is the path that should be taken by the farmer so as to maximize the yield? Yield means the, so all these numbers, they represent some yield or some score and you want to maximize the score, which is the, sum of all the numbers which you encounter during your path or along your path. So bring out your pens and pencil and paper and try to solve this problem. You can write a program, but you can do it manually as well. So let's do it manually for now. I will give you five minutes to think of your solution and then I will invite you to share your solution so that uh... so should we use Bellman's optimality here like should we focus on local uh, minima yeah 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 local minima or maxima in this case it is maximum we have to maximize your yield So if we use local maxima in this case, then uh, we may not find the most optimal path. Also. Yeah. So you have to find the global maximum and Bellman's optimality principle will help you find the global maximum.
Okay. So what is your strategy? You can write the data in a matrix form. Okay, this is in the matrix form then. Find the index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 on a row and column. Mm -hmm. And then you find the maximum, maximum value. Find the index number where the maximum value is. Okay. So the maximum value is here 21. Then, then okay, I give you, uh, I think I give you five minutes. You think about the solution and then we can discuss. Okay. Take your time. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. How we will solve it, uh, the most important thing is uh, you have to track the tokens. I'm calling them as tokens. I will, I hope you already know, but I will tell you what are they, tokens. So you start from here and it is said that you can start from any cell on the left edge. You can start from anywhere. Let us say I start from here, then what is my token value at this node? My token value is 16 only. And if I start from here, my token value is 18 only. If I start from here, my token value is 21, 11, 1, and 8. These are my token values. Now, I have to move my tokens in one of these directions. So let us say if I'm here, I can go here, here. Of course, I cannot go up because there is nothing there. So now, um, I have to find uh, what is the best path to reach this point. What is the best path to reach this node? This node, what is the best path? So to reach here, I can come from here or I can come from here, right? And this will give me better score because 18 plus 14 will be a larger value. So I'll use this path. So I will go this way and my score will be 18 plus 14, 32. So my token value is 32 if I reach here. Now, to reach this node, I can come from this side, this side, or this side. If I come from this side, this side, or this side, out of these three, which one will give me the maximum token value? This will give me the maximum token value because because this is largest score, okay? So how much will this be? 38. So my token value will be, my total accumulated score will be 38 if I come from this to this. Uh, others will not be the maximum. Now to reach here, which one will I pick? I can take this one, this one, or this one. So which one will I take? I'll take this one largest value. So the value, the whatever, what is the accumulated value the uh, at this location? 21 plus 13, this is 34. 
Similarly, to reach here, I can come from here, here, or here. And of course, this one will give me the maximum 41, right? Similarly, to reach here, I can come from here, here, or here. Of course, 11 will give me the best score. So this, may, this is 27. And then to reach here, I can come from here or here. So of course, I will take this path. So it is 16. Okay, now same exercise will repeat. To reach here, I can come from here or here. And of course, this is larger value, so I will choose this way. So it is 38 plus 11, 49. To reach here, I can come from one, two, three. Here the value is 38, here 34, here 32. So of course, I will choose the largest value, 38. This becomes 59. Now to reach here, I can come from here, here, or here. This is 41, largest value, right? Out of these three. So I will choose this path. So this is 54. My token value here is 54. Uh, now, now see that this path is completely eliminated, like path going from 21 to 13, then further it reaches nowhere. So that path is completely elim eliminated on the way. That is the advantage of Bellman's algorithm that you are not pursuing all possible paths because this is an exponential uh, complexity. The, for solving this problem, there are, there, is, there are exponential number of paths which are possible, but you have eliminated several paths just because they will not give the best solution. Sir. Yes? Sir, uh, let's say uh, we, we are uh, on first, uh, first column 21, then we can go only at three possible uh, possible points 17, 13, and 21. Uh, we can go 16, 8. Any of the, from 21, no. we can go any of the second column. No. Yeah. Only one element above, one element to right, and one. Element. Yeah, right. because this is mentioned here. She can move in directions this, this, or this. Only three diagonally up, diagonally below, or just horizontally. Okay. It is not given that how many elements it will go diagonally. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is the way we continue. And finally, we will reach to the right column. We will reach the right column. And here, whichever path has brought the maximum token value, maximum accumulated sum or maximum yield that path will be my best path. So the answer is here. So I will continue in this way. And finally, I reach the last column and I find the scores written here, the accumulated scores, 125, 138, 133, 134, 135, 136. They are quite close, but 138 is the largest value. So I will choose this one. And if I trace back my path, I will obtain this path. So, and the maximum yield which I've obtained is the value here, 138. Is that clear? This is an example of uh, not dynamic time warping, but an example of uh, Bellman optimality principle. It's called uh, Witterby decoding or it's called Witterby decoding. Just that in dynamic time warping, this matrix comes from that pairwise comparison between the two time series. Two time series are given, you do pairwise comparison. So let's say this is of length N, this is of length M, total N cross M matrix will be formed with pairwise comparison and you are just traversing the best path in that um, matrix. But the constraints are slightly different than in there you start from this location and directions of moves are a little different and you, you have to end at this location. So this kind of constraints you have put. But the, uh, the, the path following the, the finding the best path algorithm is the same with a bit coding. Any questions here? Any questions at this point? If not, 
that here we find the local optimal air glow or global optimal because uh, this is global this is global Okay. Because because when we are in a column number fifth element on nineteen, column number three, four, five, element nineteen, yeah. Then we should go. If you find the local optimal, then we should go at twenty-four, not eighteen. Am I right? Yeah. This this will be local optimal. Yes. then you are stuck here because if you go to any of these locations you are getting only less marks but here you are getting maximum marks right maximum score okay so now sorry let's come to the next topic which is I will share share another screen. Oops. Can you see it? Uh, it's Markov models. Can you see the slide? Markov yes. models. Yes, sir. so what are markov models basically you have seen that uh, it has some constraint that my current state is only dependent on the previous state that is the second order uh, or yeah, sorry first order markov model first order markov model means i my current state only depends on the previous state as you have seen in the example which i have shown earlier the example of uh, finding the best path in the field you are in the current location and you are just concerned with the previous location uh, remember that um, let me say the so here in this way so here your current location is dependent only on the previous location it does not matter uh, what was the earlier path just here the token value will tell me uh, what is the value here so this this value depends only on the previous value it does not depend on other values so that is what is markov model now so here it is defined more in terms of probabilities that what is probabilistically uh, what is markov model my it means my current value depends only on the previous value if probability of X one comma X two comma so on up to X n, uh, it can be written as P of X one, P of X two given X one, X three given X means P of X two given X one into P of X three given X two like that. So these are so there is conditional independence. So basically, this whole probability of X one comma X two comma X three comma X four, or if I if I say probability of X four given, let me write it down here. i think i cannot write here oops yeah this is not the best place to write unless i open it with uh, another software just a moment share screen okay mm, not 
second. Okay, so yeah, here we are. And I can here mark this in some way, comment and cancel, yes. Yeah, it's so my probability of sorry probability of x1 comma sorry x4 given x2 comma x3 sorry x3 comma x2 comma x1 This is basically just equal to x4 given x3. And this one can be removed. This one can be removed. It's called conditional independence. This x4 given x3, it is independent of all other nodes, right? So this child node, this, the arrow, arrow points from parent to child, the child node given the parent is independent of all other nodes. If there are multiple parents, then this child node, given this parent and this parent, both the parents, it is independent of everything else. So just these two parents are given for this one. So P of X4, given everything, or basically given X3 comma X2 comma anything else. Uh, so those things can be removed means it it will be independent of those variables like x1 or x0 etc that is the meaning of markov chain now what is a markov chain uh, in the so I'm sorry, I'm not very good with this software, Foxit. It is giving me a lot of problems. Okay. And we have seen uh, latent variable model like hidden Markov models. So I discussed this example in detail. So the basic thing is our speech can be represented as different states coming one after the other. And we are just, uh, we are just, um, open a one node instead. Convenient software. Share screen, one note. Yeah. Yeah, so you are representing your speech um, as a time series. It could be, let's say, spectrogram. So you have one spectrogram, next spectrogram, next spec sorry, spectrum, spectrum, spectrum. So this is time dimension. These are your spectra. F and this is your X of F and of T. Right? So let's say this is your first feature, second first feature vector, second feature vector, third feature vector, and so on and so forth. Now HMM means you are assuming this feature vector corresponds to certain state. Uh, let's say if your states are phonemes, this is a phoneme V. This is again V, then A. I'm saying one, then again, ah, uh, then for some time, ah, uh, then sometimes, na, then na, then na, and ultimately you are saying this is one. Right? How do you say that? You will apply another operations, some more operations here to reduce it into one. Right? So these operations are, called, are you done by 
finite state transducers. We will discuss that later. But right now we are focusing on this part, basically mapping your uh, um, feature vectors to phonemes. Now consider this part. This part is, you can say, HMM. Now what is it in Markov model? You have got, so every phoneme may correspond to one of these states. Like it, it could be any alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, or it could be any phoneme. Like it could be V, it could be V, or it could be A, uh, it could be Ta, it could be U, it could be Na, it could be Ma. Right? Let's say these five phonemes, for example. Right? Six phonemes. We silence also. Silence. Uh, these six phonemes. So at this particular time, this is time t equal to one, t equal to one, and then similarly t equal to two, and so on and so forth. And uh, if you are using a let's say Gaussian mixture model, then you can classify given the spectrum. Given this spectrum, you can tell what is the phoneme, right? There will be a probability distribution. So let us say for this one, W will have a high value. Let's say it will have a probability of 0 0.8 and NER will have probability 0 0.1. R uh, will have probability 0 0.05 and uh, U will have probability 0 0.05 and everything else has probability of zero. Right? So you, are, uh, you remember your classifier, it classifies each input feature vector into one of the phonemes or one of the states more general. I'm, I'm taking the example of phonemes uh, in this, I'm assuming phonemes are your states. States are phonemes, but as we have discussed earlier also that states could be uh, triphones, which means one phoneme uh, plus the previous phoneme plus the next phoneme. So you uh, kind of condition each phoneme based on its neighbors. So, but in this case, let us say states are the phonemes. So uh, the my classifier will tell me or GMM or whatever, the, this GMM or classifier will give me this, uh, this uh, probability distribution probability density so this goes to a gmm or it could be a dnn also deep neural network any classifier basically and this classifier gives me a soft uh, probability a soft classification that what is the probability that my output is were given the input features and i obtain this Similarly here, uh, at this, I will have another value, maybe 0 0.75, 0 0.05, 0, 0, 0 0.1, like that. So just make sure that it sums up to one, that's it. So th we will have some values like this. And similarly, we'll have the entire thing. Now, what we do is, to find the best path, like this is the best path, let us say, we can use the dynamic time warping algorithm. Right? Dynamic time warping algorithm will give me the best path. Or you can say DDW, or you can say verb beta B decoding. Beta B decoding will give the best path. So that's it. This is all about hidden Markov models. Now, one more addition is there. Now, what you will observe, you are observing that, let us say suddenly here, okay, let me say again, a verse sound is there. So let's say, uh, okay, I think I should have, Uh, 
And in between there is another state where here, this probability is 0 0.5. This O probability is suddenly 0 0.4 large value. Then this probability is 0 0.0, okay, let us say 0 0.05, 0 0.05 and zero and zero. Let us say, let us assume this is the distribution. Now you know that suddenly because V and O sound look very similar. V and O. It's called W, right? It's it's almost like U, U1, U1. So U and V are very similar uh, in one. But you know that you cannot jump from V to here uh, suddenly. Like if, if I have to get the best path, the best path will be something like this. Right? But you don't want to allow that. You want to say, Oh, I'm sorry, I should have made this as 0.4 and this as 0.5 so that this is a larger value. But now you want to make sure that this, then what will your spelling be? Instead of one, you will get one, <laughs> one. This is not a valid word, it's not a valid word. And also the duration of U is so small, just one state and you don't want to allow that. You're saying that if U, U is coming, then it should be longer thing. Okay, so two things we are in, enforcing the duration and the transitions. Right? So that is why, so our HMMs, they, uh, as you saw, as you saw in the previous example, you allowed only three directions and you said that all three directions are equiprobable. But those three directions are based on the uh, on the geographical constraint that okay, if two locations are nearby, then you can make a jump. But if two locations are far away, then you cannot make the jump. But what is the uh, field in the um, in phonemes? How how do you say two phonemes are close or far? Which where the move is possible and where it is not possible? So you do not know a priori. You have to learn it from the data. That's why there is another. Uh, so to, to model this, you have used probability of uh, were given the previous state was u. Probability of u given the previous state was were. So this is all this is called transition probability. Transition probability. Right? Uh, if I ask you, what is the probability? Okay, let's say I'm saying this is st given st minus one in general. Probability of st given st minus one. If my previous state was an u, what is the so? If I ask you this question, what is the probability of my current state be uh, t given the previous state was per? The phoneme per. Answer is very small, right? Like this sound is very uncommon, right? Very small. Like that. So the, to, to model these um, co occurrences, we use this kind of model. So basically, my model becomes probability of S. Uh, zero comma S one comma S two comma so on. This can be broken down with the help of this Markov chain into P of S zero. So there is no previous state. So this will stand alone. P of S one given S zero and given S zero. So you remember the Markov chain. This is S one, S zero, S two and so on and so forth. So S1, given S0, S1 is independent of everything else. Given S1, S2 is independent of everything else. So this is P of S2 given S1 and so on and so forth, right? This was my Markov chain. But now this is the, this is the Markov model. Now what is hidden Markov model? You have an observation X0. 
you have an observation here x1 you have an observation here x2 so to be able to say what is my probability of uh, x x0 comma or you can say s0 comma x0 comma s1 comma x1 comma s2 comma x2 comma so on and so forth this can be written as this can be written as p of s0 times p of x0 given s0 so see this this is a child child node and this child given this parent node it is independent of everything else then p of s1 given s0 times p of uh, what is it x1 right x1 given s1 times p of times p of s2 given s1 right s2 given s1 times p of x2 given s2 right now you see there are two kinds of terms here this is one this is one and this is one they are all based on transition probabilities what is the probability of this phoneme given the previous phoneme was this and this these values are coming from your gmm right classifier so you model this probability as simply some number what is the probability of this given this just a number so this is the categorical probability probability that s2 is ver given s1 was ver oh okay yeah equal to some value probability of s2 is u given s1 was u some number like that and all these some numbers should sum up to 1 their sum should be equal to 1 sum over all s2 right because s1 is constant sum over all s2 should be equal to 1 that is the constraint so this is a categorical distribution you can say a categorical distribution so this is how we this is called a uh, hidden markov model where we call this as the emission probability emission model or emission probability and this is the transition probability right so there are two kinds of probabilities one is the emission one is the transition if you remember this diagram this uh, uh okay this dependency diagram then you will clearly be able to write this equation very easily so that is all about hidden markov models and uh, we can do some problems let me move on to problems now Okay. This is another problem. Okay, let me move on to the next. Okay, so this is the problem which you can take up, and maybe we will solve it in the next class. So pr prisoners are routinely taken from jail one to city one to city two to city three to jail two. So once they are in jail one, they are unfold. They can see that they are in jail one, and then they are. Um, moved in a closed vehicle as shown in the diagram the vehicle can stay in a city for multiple days minimum one day they do not know their location while traveling like they their vehicle is clo completely closed so when they are in jail jail one they can see yeah we are in the jail and then they are moved into the vehicle and then they don't know uh, means then they are moved to the city one and they don't know how long they are 
staying in the city one and it is said that they are in uh, city one for minimum one day so in each city they are in for minimum one day they are there and they do not know their location while traveling uh, and then finally they reach city two after 10 days and uh, they know okay we are in sorry they are in jail two after 10 days and they know yes we are in jail two but on the way they have crossed three cities and they don't know how much uh, or for how many days they had stayed in each city so this is the problem that but so okay those cities are kind of unobserved states hidden states but then something is visible what is visible they their health is um, visible to them and sometimes they become very sick sometimes they are healthy and uh, so they they know that different cities have different pollution levels so some cities are very polluted uh, so they build a kind of markov model so see they the city is a hidden state and what is observed is their health status so looking at their health status they can tell whether the city was city 1 or city 2 or city 3 right so it's kind of a city is the hidden state and their health is the observed state and they have to infer the hidden state by looking at the observed state now they say that okay if i am in city 1 my probability of being healthy is 0.7 in city two, it is so polluted city. Probability of my, me staying healthy is 0.2 only. And in city three, probability of my good health is 0.6. So I have to now tell which uh, city I am in when I'm traveling. Okay, so this is the problem which you can solve using hidden Markov models. So you have an observed state and a hidden state and you have transition probabilities that here you are staying in city one with a probability of 0 0.8. You stay in city two with a probability of 0 0.6. You stay in city three with a probability of 0 0.7. And uh, this is the observation. So when they did a 10 day journey, so the first day they were healthy, then healthy, then healthy, healthy. On the fifth day, they were sick. Sixth day, they were sick. I mean, one of the prisoners, he was sick and Next two days healthy, then sick, then again for the next day he was healthy. Now he has to infer how many times or how many days did I stay in each city. And then further, uh, can he review, can he update his model based on this observation? So based on this, uh, because you know this model is not perfect, he can update this model uh, with the help of uh, EM algorithm. And this is a problem which is simpler than speech recognition, but it very nicely brings out the concept of hidden Markov models. Okay, I think you can go through this problem and uh, then in the next class we can discuss it. And also we'll move on to the next topic in the next class. Thank you very much. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, please, if, uh, could you explain the first question which I have, we have solved today? I have little doubt about this question. Yes, sir. sir, we are going from 18 to 14, 30 to 20 to 21 to 17, 38, 30, uh, plus 1 to 34, 41. Then, then here we are finding the uh, uh, optimal optimal path. And in uh, the four second column, again we are finding the optimal path. And uh, for the last column, fifth column, 19, we are getting a global path. Why we are doing so? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the seventh column, we are finding the optimal path. Yes, sir. Uh, fifth column, fifth column, uh, where 100 is written, 19, yeah. from, ni from 19, we have to go to 24, not 18, because we are finding here a optimal, uh, local optimal path, 19 to 24. Yeah, yes. But we are, we are going 19 to 18. Why? No, no, see, uh, from 19, you are going to all three states. You you can go to this one. This is also a valid path. This is a pallet path. This is a valid path. So if you were to stop here, then of course you will choose this as your answer. Right? Means you will go back, you will go from this node to this node, then this node, this node, this node, this node. 
right right but because of this layer because of this column you find that these values are small this value is the largest that is why you chose this path so means okay let me put it in uh, memorize this statement what is the best path to reach this node right what is the maximum score you get to reach uh, when you reach this node what is the what is the best path to reach this node what is the best path to reach this node what is the best path to reach this node so you got the best paths and the corresponding scores and then you just find out which one is the best score and you found out okay this is the best score but let's say one column one more column is here and we are and we are finding a, after 138 we are finding a uh, we are going up to 140 uh, 145 right and here we are at 136 last column last row 136 then here we are going to 150 then which part which part we choose from 90 to fifth column to seventh column Because we are not, we don't know the future, future path. No, no, you are, you are asked to stop here. No, in the question, it is said that you have to stop at the right edge, ending at the right edge any cell. So you are have to end here at any of these cells. So you found that. Let me end here, then I will be getting the maximum yield, one thirty eight. Yes, sir. But my question is, let's say one more column is here, and after thirty, one thirty eight. We are going to 145, let's say, and uh, here last column, last one, 136. We are going to 150. Then which path we will choose from 19 to 24, 12, and further, or 19 to again 18 and 20, and then further seven? Which path we will choose? My doubt is here because we. Oh, we are, okay. You are saying that if we have another column here, which is one, which makes the score 150, whereas this only makes 145 something, right? Then definitely we choose this this one. We'll definitely choose the largest score. If it is one fifty, then we will choose the one fifty one and one fifty uh, uh, the 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 node with one fifty, and then we will move back. And while moving back, we will reach this node, then this node, then this node, then this node, like that. It might be calculation a little bit challenging for us. Pardon? It might be challenging. Uh, to calculate the uh, optimal path because from 19 to 3 path here then again 3 path no that is not it's not challenging you have to move backwards don't go forward means don't think that after here where i'm going but more important is uh, your final state when you reach the final state whichever has the maximum score you take that as your end point and then traverse back right is that clear yes sir yes sir okay. okay so fine thank you very much see you uh, tomorrow